Welcome to Approximation Algorithms. Today we're going to talk about linear programming and the deterministic rounding. My name is Rasmus Pei. The agenda is as follows. First, I'm going to give a quick overview or reminder of linear programming. Then we're going to look at our first case study, vertex cover, also mentioning set cover. We'll cover working with LPs in Python and finally look at a case study, the price collecting standard tree problem. A linear program in its canonical form looks as follows. There's a number of decision variables, which are the ones we want to choose. Let's call them x1 through xn. So these are supposed to be real valued. We have a set of linear constraints of the form the sum of a linear combination of the xi should be bounded from above by a value bj which is again a real number. And finally, there's a linear objective function, which is to maximize a linear combination of the xi. Let's look at a small example. In two dimensions, we can draw the set of feasible solutions to the linear program. We have the constraint that each variable should be non-negative. So the feasible region is in the upper right quadrant. And we can introduce constraints 2x1 plus x2 is bounded from above by 1. And x1 plus 2x2 is bounded by one, above from 1. So this means that these uh, grayed out areas are not feasible. So the fe feasible region is in the bottom uh, left corner. And we can also consider the objective function x1 plus x2, which means that the further up to the right we go, the better the solution is. So the optimal solution is going to be the one uh, shown here. Of course, most of the time we are not going to work with two-dimensional linear programs, but work in higher dimensions. So, but the intuition in the example carries over. So a feasible region is in general going to be an intersection of half spaces corresponding to the constraints. An optimal solution can either be at a vertex, the intersection of uh, n half spaces, uh, in a corner if you like, in that case it's unique. It could also be along a face of the polytope, which means that there are many optimal solutions. Finally, it can be that the optimal solution doesn't exist, either because uh, the feasible region is unbounded, or because there simply is no feasible solution. What we just saw was the so-called canonical form. In general, any linear program can be translated into a canonical form. A general linear program might have greater than or equal to or equality constraints. Maybe we want to minimize instead of maximize the objective function. And maybe we allow values that are less than zero. Okay. So, but it's always possible to translate this into an equivalent linear program in canonical form. So how do we do this? Well, uh, I want you to consider the particular example here and think about how to translate um, these constraints into an equivalent linear program. And also think about how this carries over to the general case. Our first case study is the vertex cover problem. More specifically, we're going to look at the minimum weighted vertex cover problem. So we're looking at a graph with weights on each node and edges connecting the, the vertices. And the goal here is to select a subset of the vertices such that every edge can be oriented towards one of the selected vertices or touches one of the selected vertices. Or in other words, we cover all, all the edges. In this case, the vertex cover that we have chosen consisting of two nodes with a total cost of of four. Okay. So formally we have an input graph and a weight function that maps uh, vertices to real numbers. And we want to choose a subset of the vertices such that the sum of uh, weights is as small as possible. And also it should satisfy the constraints that for every edge either one endpoint or the other endpoint is an S. Or they can both be there. So that's, that's the problem. 
And here it's not obvious how to design a greedy algorithm. I'm not saying it's not possible, but there's an obvious way of formulating it as an integer linear program. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, um, we, minim we, want, we know what we want to minimize. It's a linear function. Um, let's define xv to be uh, a zero one variable that indicates whether v is an s. Then we want to minimize the sum of weights multiplied by the variables xv. And then we have the constraints, which simply say that for nodes v, u and v, we have to either have xu or xv equal to one, or in other words, the sum should be greater than or equal to one for all edges. So note that because we require xv to be zero or one, this is not a linear program. So the integrality, of course, is hard to depict in, in high dimensions, but we can consider it in two dimensions where I think you can get some uh, intuition. So let's look at the integer coordinates in two dimensions uh, that satisfy some linear constraints. Okay, so maybe the linear constraints rule out these uh, areas that are grayed out. Then, of course, there are some corners, some optimal values for the linear program, but the integer ones, uh, you know, are in general inside the polytope and not on the edges. So we want to know somehow, is there a way of going from the red optimal solutions to the LP to uh, integer solutions inside the polytope? So in general, we can think about the LP without the integer constraint and try to con uh, convert an optimal solution to the LP, um, just allowing any value in the interval zero to one instead of just zero and one, and try to convert it into an integer solution that is uh, at least nearly as good as, as the optimal solution to the LP. Um, okay, and this method is called LP relaxation. And let's uh, denote the optimal solution to the linear program by, by x star. So this is going to be a value in 0, 1 to the n, if we have uh, n variables. And we want to convert this into an integer solution x hat. Okay. And the idea is simple, we simply round. So if the LP has a value greater than 1 half, we round up to 1, otherwise we round down to 0. So now why does this give us a good approximation. Well, let's uh, look at the objective function on x hat. So it's simply the weighted sum of the variables x hat v over all v. And now because the rounding cannot increase the value by more than a factor of two, we can overbound x v hat by two times x v star. And we can take the two outside of the, of the sum. So then we have two times a weighted sum of xv star. And I claim that this is less than or equal to two times opt. Why is this? Well, um, the optimal solution satisfies all constraints that the relaxation does. And in addition, it satisfies integrality. So this means that the solution is at, cannot be smaller than the solution to the LP. So this was an approximation, a two approximation for a vertex cover. It can be generalized to set cover. And in fact, that's what, uh, what many textbooks do. Uh, so the set cover problem, there's a collection of sets and you need to choose a sub collection that covers all elements in, in the ground set. But please read uh, the book to learn more about that. So next we are going to look at solving linear programs and vertex cover in Python. And I've made a, a small wrapper to the standard si um, Python libraries for linear programming that is a little bit more user friendly. And uh, in order to, to use this, or one way of using this, is uh, using uh, Colab, which is a, a hosted browser-based Python environment. And um, I've shared a link to you uh, with you to this this collab that I'm showing you right now, um, that is uh, solving vertex cover on, on some graphs. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to just make a copy of the notebook so that you can edit it yourself. Um, 
and then you want to to connect it to a, to a server that is able to to run your code. Okay, so the code at the top here is simply fetching the uh, the wrapper that I that I made for for the course. You can inspect the code here if you want to see what it what works what work how it works. But it's basically a wrapper around the the SciPy libraries for for linear programming that is a little bit more more user friendly and um, uh, with with fewer distractions if you like. Okay, but um, I'm not going to go through that. So to solve a linear programming, we need to say whether you whether we want to maximize or minimize. So the, we create an object um, that is either maximization or minimization linear program. And then we can start um, adding constraints. And there are two ways to add constraints. First, you can create a dictionary that gives a mapping from the variable names to the uh, coefficients. And then finally, you want we want to give the upper bound. We can also, there's also a small parser that is able to pass at least simple constraints. Uh, and finally, we need to set the objective. And again, that can be supplied as, as a dictionary that gives the coefficients for each, for each variable in the objective function. If you want to see the LP, we can convert it to a string. But more interestingly, we can solve it and get a solution out. Okay, so this is running the solver on this small LP, which was actually um, okay. So yeah, so this is printed out by the code that I talked about. There's also some more code about the dual of the LP, and we're we'll, we're going to get back to that in a in a later lecture. So for the vertex cover problem, we don't need duality. So let's uh, let's look at the code for approximating vertex cover. Um, so there's a class also called um, a data file that is able to read simple graphs for, for you. So basically, we don't have to think about input output, we just use that class. So we want a minimization linear program. And for each edge in the graph, uh, we want to add a constraint saying that the sum of the two edges is at least one. Since it's a minimization linear, pro linear program, the standard constraint is greater than or equal to. And then finally, we want to ensure that each vertex get a coefficient of, of one in the objective function, because this is the unweighted vertex cover problem. Okay, so we, uh, after we have gone through all the, all the edges, we set the objective function with all the vertices, and then we simply uh, run the solver, and we get back a, a value and a solution, which is a, a dictionary that is, assigns a, a value to each variable. Okay, and we can run through the solution and, and, and output all the values and also round all the values. Okay, and here I've added a small number. Uh, this is to deal with rounding issues. If I didn't add that, it would mean that some, some numbers slightly less than one half would not get rounded up to one half and we would actually not get a valid solution because of numerical issues. But adding uh, 10 to the minus 10 uh, gives an almost two approximation and it's uh, kind of numerically uh, stable. Okay. And now uh, when this is run, this is run on a bunch of graphs. There's the Karate uh, Club graph with friendships in a karate club. There's uh, there are small graphs like Clique and the Peterson graph, which is a famous uh, example that's used. We have a graph over the characters in Lord of the Rings. So there's all kinds of graphs where we can try to look at. Um, so these are characters that meet each other in the Lord of the Rings book books. Okay. And okay, this this code simply runs. <coughs> runs the vertex cover approximation algorithm on all of these. And for each of them, it, you can, it outputs the optimal LP value, but also the value of the rounded solution. And we can see that for, for the routes graph, 
is actually no better than a two approximation. So the LP is gives a value of five, and um, and the rounded value has a value of, of ten. Okay, but it, it sometimes there's a a gap smaller than two. Okay, so actually the this gap is only a bound on the approximation factor. Okay, so it, it's not, it may not be the case that it's actually possible to find an integer solution or a rounded solution that is equivalent or as good as the LP solution. So the final case study today is the price collecting Steiner tree problem. And we will actually only get a partial solution today, but I'll come back to that. So what is this problem? Well, suppose that we have a, a graph with weights on edges, but also weights on the, on the nodes. So think about this as maybe customers for a cable company uh, that we think about connecting with fiber. And we have some root, let's call it V star. So it says V right now, but we'll call it V star. And we have the option of creating cable along some of these uh, edges in the graph. And this will give us, impose a certain cost, which is simply the sum of the edge costs. So in this case, it would be 10. There will be some, there might be some customers that are left out, uh, unconnected vertices, and they are also going to impose a cost. That would be the, the profit, if you like, if, uh, that we would get from connecting them. And the goal is simply to minimize the, the total cost. Okay. So the input in general is this, this graph with vertices and edges. And for each edge, we are going to get a cost, called, that's called C. And for each vertex, uh, a cost pi V. And the objective uh, we can write in terms of um, Decision, decision variables, so let's define xe to be either 0 or 1, depending on whether e is in the tree, uh, connecting v to a subset of the vertices. Okay, so it's important that uh, the graph that we choose is, is a tree that connects v to a connected subset of, of the vertices. And then yv is 0 or 1, depending on whether v is in the tree or not. And the objective then is simply to minimize the weighted sum of the edge costs plus the weighted sum of the um, vertices that are not in the, in the set. So that's the weighted sum multiplied by 1 minus yi. And this is of course a linear objective function. What is less obvious is whether there are linear constraints that can ensure that x and y are actually valid, that x includes a tree and that y is, is kind of consistent with the edges in, in the tree. So if we look at some set S and a vertex V in S, so let's, uh, uh, in the example, we have the set S consisting of, of two nodes, then we can observe that if yv is supposed to be uh, one, so if V is, is supposed to be connected to the root, then there must be some path from the root to V. And in particular, this means that there must be some edge that crosses the cut between S and V minus S um, that, um, yeah, that crosses this cut. Okay. So let's, let's call all the edges that cross a cut between S and V minus S delta S. So then we can write a linear constraint that simply says that the sum over all edges in, in delta S of Xe must be at least Yi so th or Yv. So this ensures that if Yv is, is 1, then there must be one edge that crosses this, this cut. And we require this for all subsets S and um, all vertices V that are in, in, in S. Okay. So now I'd like you to think for a while and argue that actually the converse is also true. If y, X and Y are not valid integer solutions to the constraints, then there actually exists a constraint of the form uh, that we just saw that is violated.
Okay, so now we are ready to formulate the LP relaxation. So let's just rewrite the objective function and the set of constraints. So this was the objective function and the constraints are as follows. So for each S a subset of V minus V star, the root, uh, and should also be non-empty. Uh, and each V and S, then we have the sum of Xe over delta S is at least Yv, and then also we want the root to be in the, in the tree. And finally, all the um, all the decision variables should be in zero, in the interval 0 to 1. So that's the LP relaxation that no longer requires the x's and the y's to be 0, 1, but just in the interval 0 to 1. So there are basically two kinds of decisions here. Uh, the va what value of y to choose and what value of x to choose. And we are only going to uh, look at one of them today, So which is about choosing the vertices to connect, so choosing the values of y. And we're going to come back later to the so-called Steiner tree problem that chooses the edges in the tree. We're going to use, again, a rounding mechanism, which just simply says that if the LP relaxation has a value of at least two-thirds, we're going to round up, otherwise we're going to round down. So we won't be able to do a full analysis now, but we can observe that at least the part of the cost function that has to do with the uncovered vertices is not going to grow too much. So let's look at that part of the objective function. So we are going to get this cost, uh, sum over pi times 1 minus y hat. And we can upper bound that by 3 times the corresponding sum where we put uh, the optimal solution of the linear program into that. And now the observation is simply that 1 minus uh, y hat can be no bigger than 3 times 1 minus y star, because the worst case happens when 2 thirds is rounded down to 0. So this suggests that uh, we might be heading for a 3 approximation, and indeed that's also the case. However, there is an issue here that you might have noticed. So we are having an awful lot of constraints. For each s, and there's an exponential number of choices of s, we have one constraint. So what can we do? It seems impossible to get a polynomial time solution because just writing up the LP. What we can do using our knowledge of mass macro flow mean cut is to determine in polynomial time if a constraint is violated because uh, this is simply a uh, we simply need to find a cut of value less than one. So this gives us a so-called separation oracle. And let's let's talk about how one can solve LPs with a separation oracles. So the idea is that we don't start with all the constraints, or we could even start with no constraints whatsoever. And, you know, we can find a potential solution. And we can ask the oracle, is, is this a valid or feasible solution, or does it violate some constraint? Okay, so this is our potential point, and then the oracle might say, oh, no, it violates this constraint. And we can go on like this, propose point, and the oracle will come back each time it we don't have a feasible solution and give us a constraint that it, it violates. Okay. okay, and each time we kind of add the constraint to the potential solution um, and in order to, to find a new solution that satisfies all the constraints we know about and we just repeat this. Okay. And the amazing thing is that there is a way of solving linear programming called the ellipsoid methods that only needs this kind of separation oracle. It doesn't need to know all the constraints up front. And if the separation oracle runs in polynomial time, then actually the whole LP method also can run in polynomial time. So it's only ever going to need a polynomial number of, of these uh, constraints, even if there exists a, an exponential number of them. Uh, it should be said this is not a practical method. Uh, the ellipsoid method, but sometimes it's used in practice to not state all the constraints up front, but state the constraints in a in a lazy fashion and only add constraints if it turns out that the solutions that you're getting out of the linear programming actually violate some of the constraints. 